and welcome to the Hot Tub Micro Tantra Salon. How exciting is that? <laughs> I am here today with some really distinguished people, including our own Rose Rouse, who's written a poetry pamphlet called Tantric Goddess that she's going to be reading for us a bit later. Monique Rothy, author and erotic writer most recently of The Tryst, which has come out and is doing incredibly well on Amazon, I believe, in the erotica charts, mm -hmm. incredibly well. And um, she's been, had publicity absolutely everywhere, absolutely everywhere, including Advantages of Age, of course. Mm -hmm. And Shawnee Love, and Shawnee Love, who's a sex worker and specializes in Tantra and kink. It's going to be an extraordinary discussion tonight. It is really going to be very steamy and I'm really looking forward to it. So the first thing that I'm gonna speak about is Tantra, what exactly is it? Because my experience of Tantra is probably a lot different than a lot of other people's. I came across a woman who was actually a Tantric sex worker about uh, 10 or 15 years ago who decided that she wanted to use Tantra to empower businesswomen. And she was going to teach me all this kind of stuff which generally involved a lot of pelvic floor muscle exercises i seem to recall a lot of kegel exercises and squeezing and a lot of um just kind of letting go and relaxing and there was a kind of spiritual side to it and sort of a bit of yoga involved in that it just felt like it was a whole body thing about um but maybe that's not really what it is about so i'm, I'm just gonna here Let's go to you. What does Tantra Hello. mean to you? Goodness me, what an opener of a question that is, hey? <laughs> um, Tantra is a big field, and as you say, it means many different things to many different people, and so it's hard to pinpoint an exact definition. And my background is coming from a kind of a new age version originally through the works of Osho yeah. and John Mumford and learning about sacred sexuality and how sexuality can be a spiritual experience and how our sex and our bodies can be embraced and tools to learn about ourselves and um, reach, eventually reach our divine consciousness and oneness with the universe and everything like that. All the, all the really big things out there. I've also late to learn that there's all these tantric texts written um, a lot of which are lost and they have specific rituals that are um, designed to help you get special powers and insights into your own well-being. But um, generally when we talk about Tantra, we're talking about um, a spiritual, holistic approach to sexuality. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. Would you? Well, I, um, so Tantra is a Sanskrit word and as Shawnee says, it's a broad church. So being Tantric, you can be, ta you can be Tantric. Um, it's a type of yoga, you can be tantric with your clothes on, but um, the root word tan means to expand, and really the tantra I know, and the tantra that I've been, uh, the teachers I've been working with, in particular Jan Day, who many people work with, um, talks about bringing um, more awareness into your sexuality, more awareness in your life, more awareness into what you eat, your diet, so um, the tantric, the sex that I think I used to um, have before I discovered Tantra was um, kind of a bit more of a performance. It was a little bit about getting, it was a little bit about, um, I don't know, goal oriented, horny, getty sex. And so mm. Tantra really unpicks and reverses all these ideas I used to have as a much younger woman. And, and also I want to say that this woman here, Rose Rouse, was the woman who in, has been very influential and who led me up the tantric path. And I was extremely resistant as... Well, I have remained resistant. I've been <laughs> until I got it. And until I started also tantric lovers, tantric men, you know, you never go back. You never go back <laughs> to a non-tantric lover. Um, touch is a really big thing amongst tantric people. Mm. And also this idea of giving and receiving mm. as opposed to getting you know, yeah. and also, sex. Yeah. Yuck. and Rose um, you know obviously you wrote the pamphlet Tantric Goddess so uh, what is your experience um, so I would say that my version of Tantra is a much more pragmatic about enlightenment that doesn't I never am um, I'm this doesn't appeal to me all of that kind of stuff <laughs> I'm into the kind of side of Tantra that is about kind of our emotional 
She holds you emotionally through whatever you're going through in terms of, of sexual, emotional issues that come up around sex and sexuality, which I think that's the key to all of it really is that, you know, we all have a lot of feelings around, mm. around what we're doing when we're entering that intimate field of sexuality and, and basically to find a teacher who can who actually encourages you to deal with that and creates a safe space for me is the thing mm. and then now I've met a man and he is an older man an adventurer man and we together are going down the, the slow sex route really <laughs> I would say mm. for us Tantra is about slowing everything down accepting that a kiss or a stroke or can be it can be our sexual experience that day it mm. might be penetrative sex it might be lying on the lawn and, and looking at each other it can be everything and it doesn't have a set piece it doesn't have this at the beginning and that in the middle and mm. that at the end yeah. it can be just the beginning or it can be just you know mm. it can be all these mm. things and it's really so exciting to be on an adventure like that and in yeah. fact a tantric goddess although my poetry pamphlet is called tantric goddess in a way there's this kind of humor and irony to that because a sangha met me we talked about we we kind of flirted with each other we cried and he asked me to be his tantric goddess and i said yes and then i spent at least five months backpedaling <laughs> and being so anxious and 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 in fact it was key to us having good sex in the end but he really he was really worried about me and he very like, he must have been a very patient man <laughs> I think he developed patience he did ask me I have to say this this sounds bad and it's it's not it's not a joke but it was was around all that I hadn't had a relationship for a long time and then I an ongoing committed one my fear was so huge that so there was this kind of like attraction to being a tantric goddess and then there was the reality <laughs> fucking slow everything down put all sorts of stops in place so yeah. and shawnee i am so fascinated by the work that you do mm -hmm. because i've only met one other male sex worker in my life and he was a guy who was as disconnected from his emotions and from everything else as it's possible to be. I mean, he really did look upon it as half an hour, 200 quid job done, get, you can go now. Had no relationship with his body or anything. So I'm so interested. Let alone your body. Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest, I don't even think he really, he, he said he, he, he had a lot of female clients, but I suspect and know that actually he, didn't. <laughs> okay. So I'm fascinated by the work you do and, and why women come to you and what, and, what, and what that's about because I think it takes an enormous amount of courage as a woman to be able to be vulnerable and open in that sense with someone who is, you know, who they know is, is doing that as a bit of a, as a job. Sure. So what I, oh, what happens there? Yeah, I think emotional availability is probably my biggest selling point or my yeah. biggest skill, yeah. which is comes down to the ability to hold space for people. Yeah. And so I make it clear in my workshops as well as my private sessions that all emotions are welcome. Mm -hmm. And when we journey into the body, we're likely to find emotions, mm -hmm. such as I uh, say, if you know, if you start giggling, that's welcome. Or if you find anger rising, that's welcome. Or if you start crying, that's really welcome. And all the emotions are really welcome. And I guess my emotional availability comes from having studied um, counselling for several years and just mm. sort of being able to hold space for people as they sort of journey inside themselves. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a scale, not to create a, like a hierarchy, but a scale of really carnal, um, sexual, emotionless sex, which a lot of people want. They want to have a powerful time with someone with a hot body yeah. versus the more tantric, emotional, um, heart opening, connecting sex, which is much more my forte. Yeah. yeah, and do you think you can have that with someone who you don't have chemistry with? You can create chemistry quite quickly when you slow down, oh, I love that. take some <laughs> breaths, don't rush anything, look into someone's eyes, and <sighs> there's no rush here. You, they don't have to please me, you see. Normally, yeah. when a woman's in bedroom with a, with a man for the first time, there's a 
she has the instinct or she's been programmed I should say society's programmed to, to want to please that man so I make it clear over and over you're not here to please me yeah. I'm here I'm working for you <laughs> just slow it down we'll take Perfect. some breaths yeah, together yeah, it's very I must I admit it must be very hard for some women to accept that yeah yeah but it's really powering when they empowering when they do yeah. not really of them go through decades in their lives without ever how does my body work? How does my sexuality work? Yeah, sure. how, what do I enjoy? So. I, I want to pick up um, on Shawnee talking about cre you can create sexual chemistry really quickly. Because, gosh, do we talk all the time about sexual chemistry being necessary all the time. People yeah. mention it all the time. And you just, I totally subscribe to what you're talking about, mm -hmm. but I think it's still so, society still, still entranced by the and um, trapped trapped so often in the idea of of chemistry and so it's great to hear you talk about that yeah you know, and that being possible so quickly as well mm. Mm. um i want to say that i actually am, i am a client of surely <laughs> <Yay! laughs> i wondered if you'd say that. um Hi. i i had a, a session with shawnee oh god a few years ago and i was interested in in um kink and um and it's yet to be. We haven't had session two yet, which I'll I'll be in touch with. I'll be in touch with you about. But I can attest. Um, there's nothing more empowering. And actually, I've, Shawnee isn't the only sex worker. I've um, dated a sex worker. My last partner was a sex worker. Mm. And also other other men I have paid. <clears throat> and I highly recommend it. And it comes with such a so huge good. stigma for yeah. women. It's like what you're paying someone for sex. It's just yes, and it's really going to be great. It's the best thing you can. <laughs> do is go to a male sex worker for something that you really want it's like yeah it's great do it do it out there women yeah. and so and, and Shawnee's amazing <laughs> and that's so, not I'm not being paid I'm, yeah there you, you have it you want to see point? me <laughs> um, and they can do all my marketing yeah. for now thank you very much for that so I just want to talk about Tantric Goddess we're going to do so, a, a few little readings you spoke a little bit about how you came to the to the title Tantric Goddess and yes, what that was, was all about. <laughs> and I wonder, I wonder if. Oh, I'm just gonna. Um, She's just handing me my pamphlet. Yeah. And my glasses. Yes. So and I'm I, gonna try not to be. We have never had a, an actual reading I'm in the hot tub. My glasses. Which ones are your glasses? Are they got one size? But yeah. These. And try and not drop the book in the tub. Can and not get. Can we show the book to the camera? Yes, yeah. Tantric Goddess. It's Rose's first poetry pamphlet, so it's very exciting. Available where? <laughs> On Amazon and through Eyewear Publishing, their store. So, what are you going to read for us? So, um, first of all, I'm going to read um, a poem that is kind of about my past with men and then my present. And it's called, Love is Like Finding a Secret Ballroom in My Head. <laughs> All those years I'd been doing crazy asanas, the dancing was happening round the corner. My conscious relationship teacher did a lecture on holding the psychosexual boundaries. Destroy his letters in a fire ritual. I'd always dived into Never Never Land with broken men, bits of rope and dirty dishes. To me, the terms were incomprehensible. I thought my writing should be on their walls. Enlightenment came through painstaking logic, a series of un-yoga-like forays into household chores. Like the rebels in flagrante, we move our old limbs slowly. I haven't mentioned the chandeliers. <laughs> Yay. Yay. And then I'll just read this one because it is about, it's kind of a fun, funny as opposed to a, an emotionally open version of a seven day making love retreat that um which is diana richardson's work that i did with my partner asanga and i wrote this afterwards about it and it's called the making love retreat the venue for this seven day non-sexathon is a former camembert factory in normandy 
yellow ash leaves float onto the lake. I request that he carry my battered leather bag, an exercise in gallantry <laughs> as te tantric technique, over an exotically leafy dinner next to a roaring fire. We are invited to discuss the nature of soft penetration, as other guests would consider the price of property. A relaxed penis is an equally valid instrument. No one utters an ooh or an ah. There are lessons on the love keys, naked lunches, a deux sur le balcon, time spent being emotional in a rowing boat. The peak experience is holding a finger on my partner's perineum. He's very pleased. After instruction sessions covering the various positions, afternoons are dedicated to private practice. La clé d'une sexualité épanouie est d'en faire moins. Sometimes we fall asleep, wake curled around one another. The walls emanate with de fromage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh. Poetry reading in the tub. Poetry <laughs> reading in the tub. Oh, it's your turn, oh, Monique. It's your the turn. Tryst. 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 So, so, so Monique's going to read a bit from the Trist, which, as I said, has had loads of publicity. Um, Show the cover. This is the cover. Thank you. Um, and it's a really, it's a, it's an amazing book. Um, the sex is is dirty sometimes and it's erotic and it's tantric and it's poetic it, it's poetic Lyrical. it's everything it's everything and i would i would urge you to buy it and to read it because it is actually starting to sell out in the bookshops um so yeah. i'm going to hand over to monique tell us get like my spot yes and what are you but i like what she's chosen <laughs> and um unlike poetry um miss unfucked reappear <laughs> Midst. No one explained me properly. I intimated that I knew the dark-haired man. Funny how the English cannot be plain speaking and ask questions. Fishy, awkward, difficult moments can happen, but they pass by undiscussed. The English are too polite, or perhaps too innocent to think the worst. I always took advantage of this to operate. The dumb, stupid, queen-ass, kissing prudes, Miss Polonek coughed, and the men bucked. Lila, I said. <coughs> of course, I lay claim to many other names. Lila Hopkins, I said, from the Deep South. And I was in control of them then, spinning some crazy outlandish story they gulped down, talking my best deep, slurred southern drawl. Our language has a similar cadence, butter soft. We like to use rich sexual words, and we like to curse like heathens. And so I pass this particular identity off. I told my favourite off the peg story, that I was adopted and had been found in a basket on the steps of a church. <laughs> that my adopted mother had been married five times and I was a Baptist. They nodded and they found this really interesting. Holy God on earth, if I told them the goddamn truth, they would have sw swallowed that hole too, all po-faced and serious, nodding thoughtfully. I could have told them who I really was there and then. They were so nice, so courteous. Imagine it, Miss Polonek. I have climbed out from between your legs. I am crafted from impure sediment. I am the thing that's bothering you. I have many names. Storm, Whirlwind, Strega, Screech Owl, Child Killer, Strangler, Shedden, Queen of the Windows, Thrower of Orgies, Imp. I am your pest, your very own. Come forth from all your anxieties, your half-slept nights, from all your dream trysts, from where you'd like to be. <coughs> oh yes, I know about them. How you like to indulge yourself, press your hand between your legs and rub. I am from the dark recess of your other life, the life of your unspent lust. I know a thing or two about restlessness. Oh yes, I am the one who fled. I left my own marriage bed. You don't live as you wish to. You don't live your husband as the way he wants to be loved. I am your very own thorn. I am your itch. Yay. <laughs> And that's, I won't read anymore, but that, that's... Um... No, I think we should talk about... So the, the character, Lila, yeah. 
is based on Lilith, yeah. who is Adam's first wife, uh -huh. and she is quite a demonic character. And she and and I just want you to discuss that kind of female archetype and and what happens. And okay, so so basically, in the West, we are a Ju Judeo-Christian society, and Lilith. So we have this Adamic um, story of the creation of you know the world and mankind, and the story is the story goes that there was Adam, made from dust, and he um, was given a wife. Um, also made from dust, and the, and but this this uh, wife didn't want to get under. I mean, she basically refused to lay down under Adam, and um, and bec and this was just outrageous. So they just they just ri they, she was just the first prototype, and she was so she was insubordinate. She was basically a dom, <laughs> and she ran off, and they basically banished her to the desert, where she began to propagate, propagate, and make thousands more demons. But she's the first wife that not many people... I mean, she's big in Jewish um, yeah. Kabbalistic yeah. folklore. But then, of course, they decided to make another woman, Eve, from the rib. And, of course, Eve uh, caused the you know, fall of mankind. So our early prototypes and our early um, archetypes of womanhood are of basically wh whores and insubordinate women, and women who have caused a lot of trouble, yeah. in particular... Um, Lilith, and, and also we have Magdalene in, in the Bible, mm. and, and of course we have Mary, and of course Mary <laughs> didn't even have sex, she was a virgin. <laughs> so we have a lot of um, really, really difficult messages that mm. are given to us, which is, you know, the good mother, the good Mary, the whore Mary, mm. um, Eve the wife, Eve, Eve the first, but there was Lilith. Mm. And, I, and this story is really, it has its roots in my own journey. Mm. I can say that I used to be a woman just like Jane, you know, really under-resourced sexually, you really under... a, bit, under a little bit about, because you haven't actually told the people out there about the actual, just the basic oh, what, about plot of what's... No, the plot. The the plot. Okay, right. so this is about, Jane, about, about a really nice Jane couple, a nice Jane. couple, Bill and Jane. <laughs> Bill and Jane. Bill and Jane, and... Um, nice so names. They're a nice couple, you know, <laughs> they love each other, but they're just not getting it on. Mm. And... Um, so this it's, the book is just about why, and it, it has something to do with uh, Jane's un Jane's lost something her her mm. erot her dark eros her erotic mm. self is just something that she's been split from, not just in her own life, but it's been split way back in myth mythology, mm. and I and I and I think that's true of me and many maybe many other women. Mm. So it's so Lilith mm. she manifests this shedim this throw of orgies this imp she's been having mm. these wild fantasies. And sure enough, you know, ask for what you want. If you think, you know, I do believe if you, you can dream your life, you can dream, bring forth, and she brings forth this pest. I am your, she says, I am your itch, I am your thorn, I am I what, I, you've come. Uh, and also she asks her in, and she's, mm. not only she manifests from her dream life, this woman, but she says, come home to the hot tub, you know, come home. And she's also intoxicated And, and by come her. home with me. And, yeah. and so she has an inkling. Mm. And it's kind of wisdom that calls her in, but of course she's devastating as well. Mm. Yeah, because she's unprepared what's going to happen when she does call her forth. And yeah. obviously Bill is kind of liberated by her arrival and Absolutely. discovers his own deep sexuality mm. and discovers that he can take her on in a way that she is unprepared for yeah. um i won't i won't reveal the ending yeah. of the book um but basically they then have this passionate um affair which of course destroys you know destroys the marriage and you know and it's a lot a lot of it is about what happens in celibate relationships sometimes you think everything's great because you know you love that person as a friend and you get along with them but there's no sex going on and I think as women we can convince ourselves that that things are fine um, I was reading the other day that if you don't have sex for a long time you sort of forget about it and I and I know for for me that was certainly true um, and during my marriage and um, so I think, you know, for a lot of women, they're convincing themselves everything is okay. But then when someone demonic like Lilith comes along, that's when it, the well, upheaval I, starts. And often uh, the affair, yeah. as we've discussed, is often... It heals them. Sometimes it helps. And uh, Monique's point is very much that, 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 that this woman is dreamed in yeah, no, by she's Jane. In, yeah. She's yeah. like invoked Oops. by Jane. Yeah. And yeah. it's almost like 
the crisis in their relationship, which is underneath all those good looks and yeah. kind of all that surface yeah. stuff, that's what's going on. Her, she's, she's, you know, fantasizing wildly yeah. about other men, but she wants to do it really with Bill, but doesn't but, know how to but get I mean, c Coming to Shawnee yeah. as well, my last book, I hadn't, I've written another book, which was dedicated to two sex workers who were female friends of mine. And I believe from them that all their clients are happily married men, happily married men. Yeah. Because marriage does become an institution. I and mean, yeah. you have to think about them. brick, mortar, money, friends, family, mm. pets. I mean, there's so much invested in a marriage is that, you know, the sec things have to be really bad before you go separate way ways. True. And, you know, so, so or you go and see a sex worker or you find your or way. Or very and often there's agreements within marriages yeah, where well. you just don't tell me, I don't want to know, you know, blah, blah, blah. I think just for time's sake, I just want to move on to the next topic, which is just how, you know, about just sex writing in general, because we've all read, I'm sure, some really bad writing about sex and yeah. even and and it gets so bad that there's actually an annual award called the bad sex award yeah. that's just devoted entirely to people who write really bad sex scenes and one of the things in the trist is that they are absolutely beautifully written um and there's not you're never going to get a bad award for sex writing um why do you think some people find it so hard to to write about sex I mean, it must, I mean, you know, you're using your imagination and your experience. So if you're writing bad sex, you either have got a poor imagination or you haven't got much experience. Mm. I always think the worst sex writing is, is, is written from fantasy as opposed to reality. Yeah. So I would say like a bad example of sex writing is usually, I hate to say this, but male and it's usually um, strong objectification of a particular female stereotype. <laughs> the whore yeah. so hence you know women in high heels you know I think for me writing good sex is like writing any other scene any anything else it's you write I mean I am a tantric woman and also a magical realist so yeah. those ideas and those aesthetics come in the writing mm. and I think you know literally if you're writing about you could write about this what's happening here you know yeah. writing sex is no different mm. to writing about making a macaroni pie you know <laughs> no different and I think I think if you're not having good sex I also say to my students write bad sex write about the pain of sex write about difficult sex write about the the not just the whole you know, the beginning or the middle or the end or the evening on the grass or the the bits the, the pain of sex is so common mm. and I think write that mm. write anxiety or something yeah amongst writers I'm reading house of holes at the moment have you read I can't remember, um, I should know who it's, uh, I, I can't remember the author, he's quite famous. Anyway, the funny thing about House of Holes is, is, is complete objectification and projection of what he imagines other women's fantasies to yeah. be, which are purely a manifestation of his own fantasies. Yeah. It is absolutely hysterical. It is literally I think it's like... funny, that's great. It's, I think it's kind of meant to be funny, but it is... It is it is a deep insight into probably a pretty traditional male sure. psychology, sure. which you would understand more about, which is like, you know, all of that stuff about high heels and stuff. And, oh, my God, she just wants it so bad. Yeah, I can relate to some of that. <laughs> Seeing a woman and, yeah, have your projections. Oh, I, imagine, I can imagine what she would enjoy sexually. And I think we all have those projections on each other. Not usually based on reality at all, but um, those projections. Are some of your female clients married, for example, and their sex life has stopped or isn't what they want? Some of my female clients are married, yes, indeed. And they're not getting what they need at home. They've been the emotional... So do you feel that you're in some way not quite saving the marriage, but you're... I mean, are you a Lila figure in, in a marriage, but more contained because you're obviously ethical and professional. But imagine if you were not Let a loose. worker. Imagine if you just showed up. And then yeah. You're a bit of a Lila figure, aren't you? Um, professional Lila figure, maybe. I like the Lila figure and the Lila versus Jane figure because I think that mirrors what happens to a lot of people in society, especially young women who are split and a lot of people are made to suppress their emotions. Mm. Usually young girls are told to suppress their anger, don't get angry. Mm. And young boys are told, don't cry, don't cry. Mm. And so that's, that split comes through and here you've got Lila who hasn't suppressed her emotions and she's still wild. And a big part of the work often is to marry that um, Lila and that Jane or that Eve and that Lil together. So 
often sessions are around it mm. based on those concepts. Yeah. 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 A professional liar, a professional stirrer, <laughs> initiator. Yeah, Chaos sometimes. agent. Chaos agent. Chaos yeah. magician. <laughs> change like agent. Words. That's what Lila is. She's you, a change agent. You don't agent. ever see couples together. I do see couples sometimes, oh. and I teach them about ways to communicate with each other. Basically, it's usually about teaching rather than threesome. Yeah. And um, like, the, like a memorable client session was when they came to me about a year and a half ago. This long-term couple that'd been married for a long time, and this man had had several lovers, and he learned to touch a clitoris like that. Okay. <laughs> and the women he touched had always come very quickly. And he got to this partner, his new his wife, and he'd done the same thing and she hadn't enjoyed that sex at all. And he, he didn't ask, yeah. how do you like to be touched? And she hadn't said, touch me a different way. So I just introduced the conversation. <laughs> ask, how do, would you like to be touched? Or say, how do you like to be touched? And she wanted to be touched <laughs> this way instead of that way. <laughs> and I got him to ask and he asked and she answered. And I think the marriage is saved now because of that very is, basic yeah. Yeah. Marriage saver. more on, please. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Bit so of communication. I, 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 like I said, I used to date somebody who did what you did, and I was just so pro what he did. I was just like, oh, you know, <laughs> darling, you're doing not just with couples, but with there's so many people excluded from sex and sexuality for so many reasons. Yeah. Mm. So it's a really important thing. I mean, what yeah. you do is just it's uh, it's 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 um, it's still in the mar it's still in the margins, isn't it? I mean, in different countries, sex work has better. Um, well, like some countries, yeah, well, acknowledgement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Different degrees of stigma around yeah. sex work yeah. and different laws around sex work. Yeah. It's actually illegal in a lot of places. Yeah. I can't do my job in a lot of countries in the world. Yeah. Yeah. What about here? Here I'm allowed to do it, but I'm not allowed to help somebody else do it. So yeah. I'm allowed to share a premises, I'm not allowed to have a cleaner, for example. A yeah. cleaner got arrested a few weeks ago yeah, in that's London right. for cleaning somewhere where people are doing sex work. Are you so we had a problem with a well-known, a well-known, so Shawnee and I were going to do a, a talk together, weren't we? Yeah. We were, gonna, we, were, we were going to, we won't mention who it is, but we were going to do a talk together for a very well-known customer, a very well-known shop. Shop, and, and the minute they found out Shawnee was a sex worker, they just called the whole thing off. Yeah. So that was just so disappointing. Yeah, yeah. And that stigma follows us around quite a lot as sex workers. So, <coughs> sex workers do. I, I wondered make... about. Oh, we're wrapping up now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to ask those questions afterwards. I know. Sorry, it's just been too intriguing, but I, I know when to stop. Um, and the time is now. So. <laughs> so. Thank you so much for joining us. And Monique's book is available pretty much everywhere, but definitely on Amazon. It's called The Trist. And Rose's poetry pamphlet is available on Amazon. And it's called Tantric Goddess. And I'm Suzanne Noble, Shawnee Love, Rose Rouse, Monique Rothy. Thank Yay. you very much for watching. Yay.